What's up everybody, the Poets here. I hope you're doing well and staying safe. Of course, wearing your mask, it's getting kind of crazy out there. I do have a weekend project that I'm working on here on Deep Blue. So for those that aren't familiar, Deep Blue is a Threadripper 3 system. So 3970X, 32 cores, 64 threads, 64 gigs of RAM. Lots of video editing that I do on this. Teeny bit of gaming when I have some time, but it's a, it's a powerhouse for video editing in 4K. And so I am going to be replacing the water block. This is the Optimus water block that you may have seen in previous videos. And they sent me uh, basically updated hardware. So I'm going to show you in this video how to update the hardware for a water block when you have that opportunity. Uh, this is basically going to help with the mounting pressure because Threadripper 3 is very finicky, kind of quirky when it comes to mounting. So sometimes you have to mount this uh, processor two, three times just to make sure you have it right. So the system works flawlessly. So additionally, I do have to drain the system then. I'm going to also show how to replace a water block in a Threadripper 3 system, and then of course filling this. So instead of this being like a 45 minute or an hour long video, I'm going to probably break this up into a few different videos. But this one, let's work on this water block and go from there. All right, so I have my quarantine workbench here. And so this is what the water block actually looks like. It's actually quite nice, really impressive. And so I'm going to have to take all the stickers off. This is the back plate there. Quite nice and shiny. They did an exceptional job, they really did. And really we just have to unscrew everything. So we're gonna be doing this together for the first time because typically you only have to do this once. And I'm gonna start with the larger screws first. I highly recommend whenever you're doing a project like this to get one of these magnetic trays. They're kind of invaluable. You know, just pop your screws right in there. So this is impressive. So this is the O-ring around here. This is what basically is holding the fluid away from spilling outside of your system. And then this is what really impresses me here. So this is the plate, cold plate. And you can already tell because this is like straight out of the factory that there's little tiny bits of, I guess, kind of machinery, probably plastic. Uh, that are in these fins. There's 225 fins in here, supposedly. I'm not gonna count all of them, but they are very, very fine. Like, I don't think I've ever seen a water block with such fine fins. And this is covering more than 100% of the entire IHS of the Threadripper 3 water, uh, Threadripper 3 processor. So this is gonna be very, very nice. So this is a good example of why you always wanna like flush your radiators and flush your water blocks before you put them in the system because these are really fine. So I wanna make sure that all that excess, you know, uh, material from the manufacturing process is out of there. So always clean your rads, always clean your water blocks. So let's see if we can just kind of yank this out. Oh, slides right out, very nice, okay. All right, so I have this off comfortably. I just wanted to take my time with that. And then we can put this on using the same orientation. Slides right in there. So this is the most important part. It has to be flush, no stress whatsoever and clean. We can put this back on very carefully. I'm going to start with the big boys first. I'm going to be very gentle in terms of screwing these in because I want to kind of do it in a crisscross format. So you just want to check all the edges to make sure 
It is flat, no gaps. This side, I just want to make sure a little bit more. Okay. All right, so we're at the responsible stage of testing this for leaks. So if you didn't see my previous video, this is an EKWB D5 pump. And basically in that video, I tested this for leaks and it went, ran perfectly. This one, yeah, we want to make sure since we took it apart, especially because we took it apart, that there are no leaks whatsoever. So I have some uh, older soft tubing here. Actually, I'm going to have to cut some of the ends just to kind of freshen them up. And we're going to just do a quick, simple loop. And I did just rinse these as well with uh, tap water and then flushed it with distilled water. Uh, we don't want to make sure that all the tap water is out of this, but didn't want any unnecessary dust build up and crud build up in here. So these are fairly simple. Basically you just screw them in very carefully. And same with this. And then I should have a tool hiding around here. There we go. You can use a tool like this to just make sure it's nice and, and taut so that you don't cut up your hands because these will definitely like cut up your skin. There we go. And so this is the out. on here and this is going to be the in and so testing for leaks is always invaluable especially when you've taken hardware apart or it's hardware you've never ever used before uh, like this Optimus water block um, it's brand new and it just came out. So so this is the out going into the in for the block here. And this is not the easiest thing to do with my left hand, but let's go. There we go. Plops right down. And then the same for this one. All right. So hopefully we'll get this to stay somehow, some way. Good enough for me. Now we can start filling this. So again, using distilled water for this. going to have to put more in there but in the meantime let's plug this in if you didn't see my previous video on testing this definitely check a look take a look at that because you do have to put a jumper on your power supply to make sure that uh, basically you're tricking the power supply to make it think that it's actually plugged into a motherboard so now I can flip the switch in here and yes it is plugged in this time and I'm only going to do a certain amount because as the water goes through the whole system here, this actually lowers. So the last thing you want to do is have your pump run dry. There we go. Turn this back on. Okay. So there's a term called bleeding the system where when you have a water cooling loop and you fill it initially, you'll see all this air bubble accumulation in there. And it's literally throughout the whole system. So there's gonna be air bubbles in the tubing, air bubbles in all your water blocks. There's actually one uh, big one here that's struggling to come out. So when you have air bubbles in your water blocks, those could actually cause your temperatures to temporarily jump at unacceptable levels and even shut down your system uh, potentially. So 
One thing you can do is, of course, just to let the system run for a very, very long time. If you're impatient, like me sometimes, you can actually just kind of tilt your system back and forth. So kind of think of this as the entire computer rocking back and forth. And you'll notice there that now more air bubbles just went into the pump here. And then as it gets into the pump, it can dissipate into the air. So this I'm going to let run for at least a half hour, maybe a full hour, uh, mainly because this is an, a very important uh, part of the whole system, uh, the CPU water block. So I will come back in about a half hour and see how this looks. And of course I have the paper towel here so that I can tell if there's leakage. All right, everybody, we can call this a win. This has been going for over an hour now and not a single sign of any leakage whatsoever. This is actually kind of hot uh, because this is a D5 pump by EKWB. D5 pumps do tend to run kind of hot, so you have to make sure you have good airflow in your system, uh, but they're very powerful pumps and incredibly silent as well. So this is actually my favorite pump right now. Um, this Optimus water block, so far, so good. I really, really like the design of it. So if you wanna see the next stages of this video series, definitely hit that subscribe button. And if you like this video, hey, hit that thumbs up. So I'm gonna have a video on uh, definitely draining and filling uh, Deep Blue there, my Threadripper 3970X system, as well as a separate video on basically taking it apart to install this uh, water block by Optimus. Uh, I will have some benchmarks comparing this Optimus water block to the EKWB Velocity water block. So we'll see you know, if all this trouble is worth it, but in the end it was. This has been a lot of fun and I like trying out new gear. So thank you very much and I will see you in the next one. Peace.